welcome President Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Uh, 
a, a fantastic book, and then another book by uh, one of America's finest historians, Eric Foner, Reconstruction, uh, America's Unfinished Revolution. Both of these came out in 1988. Both of them have sold into the hundreds of thousands, which is, from a historian standpoint, incredibly successful, enviable. Any of us who write history would love to have those kinds of numbers. But we're up against it as academic historians because even a, a modestly and moderately marketed and budgeted film, historically based film, once it makes its run in the theaters and once it goes to DVD, it's going to reach millions of people, not just tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, but millions of people. These are our uh, rock stars in American history, James McPherson on the left, Eric Foner on the right. I mean, they are high-powered historians, but as far as sex appeal, they, they cannot match <laughs> Nicole Kidman and Natalie Portman and uh, Renee Zellweger, the three co-stars in uh, Cold Mountain, 2003. Didn't I hear you just give away Cold Mountain? Yeah. Who got it? <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Have you seen it yet? Yeah. Great movie. Historically, eh, but a great movie. <laughs> um, you know, none of them can touch my gal here at all. <laughs> there are certainly problems that we students of history uh, confront any time we look at a film that is supposedly based on true events or personalities. And it's the, it's the accuracy inherent in the film and, uh, that hand. And uh, John Sayles, who was a fine director, an excellent director, and he's made uh, some films based on historical events and historical personalities. Uh, one comes to mind, uh, came out about 20 years ago called May One, which was about labor struggles in the early 20th century. He said this uh, in an interview when he was asked whether he uh, or other filmmakers care what historians think of his films, and he said, I think it's generally a very little concern, as long as the filmmaker feels he's being true to the spirit of the history. Basically, history is a story bin to be plundered, and maybe you find some of what you read useful, and you get rid of the rest, characters, ideas, countries, even. And so, for those of us who are, you know, astute observers of history, it drives us crazy uh, when we want to see that beautifully perfect historically historical accuracy in the film uh, at hand. And uh, the producer of Glory, I'm going to show you a clip of Glory a little bit later, uh, Freddie Fields, the film Glory in 1989, which chronicled the 54th Massachusetts Colored Regiment, said this. He responded to criticisms uh, that his film got some of the historical details wrong, and he said, you can get bogged down with dealing in history. Our objective was to make a highly entertaining and exciting war movie filled with action and character. So, there you have it. Plato, many centuries ago, uh, when he was writing about other things, uh, in the allegory of the cage, said that re representation of a thing is not the thing itself. I mean, that seems pretty self-evident, but I think we have to keep that in mind. Film is art, and film is designed to provoke and stimulate and entertain. It's our job as historians and, and as students of history to learn history to teach history. We can't leave it to Hollywood. Though Hollywood does get it to, can get it to your visceral level and provoke emotions and provoke responses that you know we historians just don't maybe have the luxury uh, of being able to do. Uh, you know, a film is compressed in a small compartment of time, whereas a sprawling six or seven hundred or eight hundred page book is going to take time and energy and discipline uh, in order to get through, to get, you know, the story of the past. Films don't have that luxury. They have, you know, two hours or less to make sure that they get their point across. Films are also a, a reflection of our historical thinking, nonetheless, despite the fact that they 
there's a lot of literary and historical license that goes on in filmmaking about uh, the American past and about the Civil War, um, there nevertheless is that they're influenced by prevailing historical thinking, and they also they also influence our thinking about the past. It's somewhat sim symbiotic, the relationship between history and films. And as the great Western historian Frederick, I know, all this academic stuff, I'll get to the films in a little bit, I promise. It's constantly, you know, if I had to do some of the academic stuff first. It was a great uh, 19th, early 20th century Western historian by the name of Frederick Jackson Turner. And he once famously stated that each age tries to form its own conception of the past. Each age writes the history of the past anew with reference to the conditions uppermost in its own time. So the past is constantly being reinterpreted, rewritten in essence, in large measure because of what is influencing historians and society at the time that history is being written and rewritten. And so the same can be said more or less for filmmakers, uh, Hollywood filmmakers. The Civil War films can often tell us about about the period of time out of which they came, but they can also, uh, as much as it as sometimes tell us as much about the aspects of the war itself or the story itself that it's trying to convey. They truly are cultural texts, much like uh, the first night when Professor Jen Lin talked about photographs being texts that can be read and can be interpreted. And so the same should and could be said about films. The very first film, that dealt with the Civil War was a film called uh, The House with Closed Shutters. It came out in 1910. It was by a filmmaker uh, who became very, very famous, D.W. Griffith. And it actually is a, about a, a woman who cross-dresses and becomes a Confederate soldier uh, during the Civil War. I must admit I haven't seen this and I don't know Brent, do we have this in our library collection? If not, we can have it just like that. We need to get it just like that. The first film that dealt with Civil War, 1910. The most recent film actually hasn't even come out yet. It'll be out Friday. It's called 12 Years a Slave, and it's about Solomon Northrup. Solomon Northrup was, a slave, was actually a free black in the North uh, in the antebellum period, and he was captured by uh, bounty hunters in the north, slave kidnappers, and they hauled him into and enslaved him in chains and took him into the south, where he was enslaved for 12 years before he finally escaped, went back to the north, and then wrote about his story and assisted the abolitionist cause before the Civil War. This film is coming out Friday. I, have, I don't know the quality of it. I don't know if I can recommend it. Friday, the next film about the Civil War era is coming out. 